Today I have the pleasure of being with the chairman for Texas Rare Earth Resources. How are you today, Anthony? Hey, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. And I want to talk to you about Texas Rare Earth Resources, but can we start with just discussing Molly Corps a little bit? Can, you know, uh, give me some of your feedback on what's happening and how it's impacting you. Well, for those who are not aware, Molly Corp stock has been on a steady decline in the last uh, several months, but in particular the last year. And actually, over the last several days, there's been uh, some news out on uh, another popular uh, blog that suggests that there are uh, entities that are acquiring the bonds of the company in the anticipation that there will be some type of restructuring, and as a result, they want to be in a position where they potentially control the company. Um, so it's, uh, it's been a rough road for Molly Corp equity investors, and will continue to be in my belief. Okay, so you are though another North American, American-based rare earth story, and something that uh, Jack Lipton and I have been, you know, basically reinforcing to our audience is that there are more companies out there than just Molycor in the United States. So for all of our investors out there that are caught up in the Molycor saga, um, I did uh, just finish getting off the phone with Jack Lipton, who. Uh, put you aside and mentioned you as one of the companies that they should be watching and I did see that you're moving uh, favorable, favorably in the market this week. So could you give us a bit of an overview, uh, Anthony? First, I just want to say in the case of Molly Corp, they did a fabulous job on the way up. Their IPO was very successful and the stock moved, you know, a multiple of five. And in doing such a good job, we're now seeing the effects of the downside, which is most investors, and I speak to many, uh, I have a capital markets background, as you probably know, I speak to many sophisticated investors, and even the most sophisticated investors associate the rare earth industry as a whole with Molycorp. So my concern is that people who follow Molycorp believe that somehow the price movement and problems that Molycorp has had is endemic to the entire industry. And that probably is not the case. Not probably is not the case. In the case of Texas Rare Earth Resources, we are a predominantly heavy 72% rare earth company. And Molly Corp is not even the other way around. They're predominantly light rare earths. Each segment has very different supply demand characteristics and supply demand characteristics going forward. So as opposed to light rare earth, where China can supply all at once at whatever cost it wants, China is going out and searching for heavy rare earth deposits around the world, and particularly in Australia. So that tells you something about which sector of the market you want to be. We believe we're on the right side of the market going forward. Your points are excellent. In fact, Jack and I were just discussing, I mean, five years ago when uh, we first started speaking, it was about how most people don't understand the complexities. Most people don't know uh, what the rare earths are, and I would argue they still don't today. And uh, we had a number of uh, comments on our site about, well, what about Molycore's heavies? Because Molycore did, in their presentation, represent themselves as having heavy rare earths. So there is some confusion out there um, that they do indeed represent the uh, heavy rare earth market. And um, so do you have any comments on that? Well, the the heavies that they represent, I believe, are located in China. They process heavies in China. Those heavies will never make their way out of China due to export restrictions. I believe Mountain Pass uh, in California does not have any heavies, or they may have put out a press release a long time ago suggesting that they were about to explore for heavies. Nothing ever came of that, so I would suggest that there probably are no heavies in California. California Mountain Pass is a light rare earth entity and the conversation. If you want heavies out of Molly Corp, go to China. So Anthony, you have a very distinguished board of directors and advisory board for Texas Rare Earths. Could you tell us about uh, some of these members? Well, you mentioned Jack Lifton, who is, I believe, an outstanding writer and individual and just a, a force in the rare earth industry. He joined our board last September, and I'm, re I'm mentioning the most recent uh, board member. Jack has been 
um, a tremendous addition to the board, very independent thinker, um, you know, uh, criticizes when appropriate and obviously gives a pat on the back when appropriate, but he has been extremely instrumental in, form, in forming our uh, policy in terms of uh, project development and looking internationally uh, in terms of potential strategic partners and so on. So I can't say enough, and I'm not sure many of your readers are aware that he's on the board, but he's sensational. We also had a new advisory board member join in March uh, by the name of Robert Wingo. Uh, Robert is a very successful entrepreneur in the El Paso area. Uh, also used to work in the governor's office uh, in the economic development area. Very, very well connected in El Paso uh, circles. And El Paso is actually a very vibrant uh, economy. A lot of major corporations down there, home to Fort Bliss, the largest military installation and growing in the United States. Uh, Robert brings a tremendous expertise in developing local um, uh, support, uh, both financially and, and politically, uh, to what we're doing in Texas. Can you tell us what we should expect as shareholders and potential shareholders out there for Texas Rare Earth Resources in the next, say, six to nine months? Sure. Uh, first of all, we publicly announced that we are in the process of searching for a um, strategic partner for our next phase of development, which would be a uh, full feasibility study. Our PEA was really a PEA slash pre-feasibility study. We've done a tremendous amount of metallurgical work. We have, and this may sound like an advertisement, but I say this sincerely, we have what is probably the simplest metallurgical deposit or me simplest deposit uh, metallurgically in the world. Uh, I would argue that you know, we are as simple to uh, metallurgically uh, develop as China, and as a result, we are searching for the right partner to help us in our next phase of development. In addition to which, uh, and many people may not be aware of this, we have a very strong relationship with the University of Texas El Paso. One of our board members, uh, Nick Pingitori, actually is the architect of our heat bleach uh, metallurgical strategy, and he continuously is doing work at the University of Texas El Paso lab. So we're, we will have announcements relating to metallurgy. Uh, we are making tremendous strides metallurgically uh, every week we do a tremendous amount of in-house uh, uh, studies, obviously, which have to be validated, but uh, I believe you will see our CapEx, which we stated at $293 million, and that, by the way, includes a 25% contingency. I personally believe that that number will drop potentially significantly as time goes on. Well, Anthony, thank you so much. Over the years, I've been following Texas Rare Earth Resources, and what I've been very impressed by is one at a time, you've been taking each of our most respected writers and analysts, and they have been not only increasing their coverage, coverage but becoming um, large cheerleaders for you. So thank you, Anthony.